Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if this is your first time here. My name is Jillian Barry, and I'm so excited for today's video because I'm going to be doing a responding to comments video. So this is going to be a fun, entertaining video. I'm going to go over a variety of comments that I've had on my channel. I'm going to go over some of the hate comments and then also get into some of the really super common questions and comments I've had on my channel. A lot of like raw vegan questions that I see a lot and things where I can maybe help you guys out in answering things that might help your life and make you succeed on the raw vegan path. Let's get right into it. I'm so excited. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up for me right now and subscribe if you don't already. Nina writes, how long has it been on the vegan diet and it won't last for long? See where, you're, where you are in five years and how you look. Take a picture of your face now and then. How old are you? If you're younger, you can get away with things for a while. Wrong move, 1% of humans are able to sustain this. You know what, I've been doing this for almost six years. It's been over five years now. So I feel like this is like sort of long-term I'm at and I feel absolutely amazing. I feel like I definitely will succeed long-term. This diet has totally fixed all my health problems and I am completely thriving. And I think in some cases where people aren't succeeding, it's because they're missing certain nutrients. They're not eating like a wide variety of plant foods, like fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Maybe they're just eating like the same thing all the time and just not getting like a diverse variety of plants, which is what our gut microbiome thrives on the most. So anyway, you guys can stick around. I plan on being on YouTube forever. I plan on doing these videos even when I'm 80 years old. So you can tag along, see how my face looks. I feel like I definitely look younger now at 39 than I did when I was 29. And anybody says that who sees when I post pictures, like on my Instagram or whatever from when I was in my 20s, I look younger now and it's definitely working for me. Nina, you can have your opinions, but that's where I'm at. Okay, so this other person commented. I don't have the name right now though. I don't know why. I think I just deleted their comment, but sometimes I delete them. Sometimes I leave them up there. I'm just at the point where I'm gonna just leave them up there. But this person, sometimes they're bad vibes though and I just want them off there. I don't know. But this person said, she looks malnourished. So I feel like I absolutely don't. If this is what malnourished looks like, then I think that's crazy. So this led me for you guys to look up the symptoms of malnutrition. Reduced appetite, I don't have, I am extremely hungry. Like I have like an extreme like healthy appetite. I mean, not extremely hungry, but lack of interest in food and drink. You guys can look over my channel. I have like obviously a huge passion and interest and love for food, especially the raw vegan food. Feeling tired all the time. Okay, you guys, I have so much energy. This is the number one reason why I do this diet, the raw vegan diet because I have more energy than I've ever had in my entire life. And I know like most of you probably don't realize I have uh, two children, I'm a single mom. One of them just turned three and she has woken up every night in the night for the past three years. I never sleep through the night and I still have so much energy and I accomplish so much each and every day. So I am never tired and that is why I do this diet. Feeling weak is another sign. I never feel weak, I feel strong. Getting ill often and taking a long time to recover. I literally never ever get sick and that's another reason why I eat this way. Poor concentration and a few other things. I don't have these symptoms so I just thought I'd go over them for you guys so you know like what exactly malnutrition is. And I am definitely not experiencing that on this diet. I'm absolutely thriving. And I don't know, like, even in the video where she said that, I asked my friend, I'm like, do I look good? I don't at all. He's like, you look so healthy. So I don't know. I don't understand when people post things like that, if that's what they really mean, or they're just like, they see that the person's thriving and happy and they're just trying to hurt them. I don't know. All I have to say is I wore this sweater in this video because that's how I feel about those types of comments don't be a D-I-C-K. So anyway, so this other comment said, she reminds me of Michelle from American Pie and I, whatever, nothing against Michelle, you're great. I don't think so, but this other person said, how about the suffering of the plants? And I mean, some people make that comment, which I do get, they say plants have feelings as well. I can understand when people make these comments, but I mean, to me, the animals suffer way more if you're gonna choose to eat animals over plants, so. I love the plants. This other comments said the raw vegan diet is a starvation diet. To me, like, uh, like I've said about the malnourished thing, I'm absolutely thriving or I would not be doing it. Why would I be doing it? I would have never created a channel around it. For me, I absolutely thrive. 
And I mean, maybe it is in certain cases if people aren't eating enough or they're not getting like certain nutrients like B12 or this or that, you have to be careful and make sure you're getting everything, but it's definitely not a starvation diet. And then somebody else said, you look 75. Again, I don't think I do. If you guys think I do, whatever you guys think I look for my age, comment down below, I would love to hear that. There was also another comment this morning on one of my videos. I posted a zucchini uh, pasta video and avocado pesto, and I don't have it on me, but somebody commented and they said, that this food is not suitable for humans, the avocado pasta dish, the all raw zucchini dish. And then they said, because my daughter, my daughter May was in the video, they said it's not suitable for children either. I mean, first of all, it's a super nourishing, amazing dish. And in my opinion, the diet that I was eating before being raw is not suitable for the human body because that's where I was running into a number of health problems like digestive issues, bloating, um, panic attacks, severe stress and anxiety and depression, and just so many physical, like so tired every day, so many physical and mental problems. So to me, the stuff I used to consume and like the standard American diet and the things I was consuming was not suitable for me. And something like a raw vegan pasta made with all Mother Earth's natural ingredients makes me feel amazing. So that's what I go off of how I feel and how my health is, how my mind is, and I absolutely wouldn't be doing it if I wasn't thriving in all those areas. And as far as my kids go, I mean, I don't really like it when people make comments about my kids. And I know there's other channels that get like these anti-vegan channels. They love to go nuts on people, make video, uh, videos about vegans where they post their videos, they rip them apart, and they just get all this interaction in the comments, people making fun of them and this and that. And when they have kids too, and I just think it's so low, I can't stand it. Um, and I think it's so low, but I mean, it's not really anyone's opinion anyway, but I'm pretty transparent. I'm pretty open on my channel. That's just how I am as a person. And my kids, my family is not raw vegan. I'm the only raw vegan in my family, not like it's anyone's business. And I'm not saying it because I think I owe that person anything at all because I don't, but they do eat like a wide variety of like fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, but they're not vegan. They're not raw vegan, but there that is, because sometimes people comment about your kids and just assume they are, but they're not. Anyway, those are some of the hate comments. They're not too bad, but obviously you're going to get them, especially when you have certain opinions and live such a drastically different lifestyle like I do. Um, but yeah, some of them have just been so bad, I've just deleted them right away. But fortunately, I don't deal with too many. Like, I love you guys. My viewers are amazing. I love making my videos. But obviously I still do get like some nasty people on there and I just wish they didn't exist. Like I wish they, those types of people just didn't exist. Maybe that sounds bad. I don't like, didn't, didn't like engage in that type of negative thing. Cause once you read something, it's in your head and I just wish I didn't even ever have to see it. Some of these nasty people, but it is what it is. And all I can do is grow from it, get thicker skin and grow stronger and be better and use them to make myself grow even more. Now I'm gonna get into some more positive comments because I don't wanna spend this whole video on all that crap and those people don't deserve a video in themselves anyway. So I'm gonna get into the positive comments some things that can add value to you guys. Just lift the move, lift the vibe a little bit and some of the common comments and questions I've had about the raw vegan lifestyle. All Natural Indigo says, I wish that I had your strength. I just want to give up sometimes when I feel like my body is not properly responding to the raw food. My husband is eating all these yummy foods while I'm still eating some yummy foods too, but am still very ill. So I'm not sure. I don't know if she is like 100% raw or not, but I think she is. But in these cases, I mean, I think people can sometimes experience detox for a lot longer than they realize if you've been eating a certain way, like the standard American diet for a number of years. I think the detox symptoms of the toxins, like getting out of you too quickly and things like that can cause problems for like a period of time. Um, I know my friend Shane Sterling at Raw Vegan Rising, like he went through detox symptoms for like at least one or two years before he totally started to thrive. I fortunately didn't have to go through any of that. I know like a solution to some people is a juice cleanse, like a longer juice cleanse to get through all that or maybe switching up the way you're eating. I'd have to know also exactly how you're eating. But, and then this other person says, I get too hungry being raw. So this is definitely a huge complaint. A lot of people say on the raw vegan diet, I think this is the biggest reason why people don't do this diet. And I've done a video about how to feel full on the raw vegan diet, which I will link down below for you guys. But there's things you can do. And I think first of all, you have to realize like you're gonna eat more food than you did on the standard American diet. It's gonna be different portions. And I think you have to like not be scared to eat more food and eat bigger portions. And I think like eating is a good thing. I think we have to not be afraid to like be eating more. Um, I take food with me everywhere I go just so I'm prepared. And there's different things like eating uh, raw vegan proteins 
with your meals, like lentils, chickpeas, soaked, things like that, spirulina, like it's proven they fill you up more, that works for me. And chia seed pudding, I talk about it a lot, but it's so filling, that's my top go-to for feeling full. So there's different things you can do. Um, and yeah, I'll link some videos down below to help you guys out for that. This person says, I've tried raw vegan before, but never have stayed completely raw. I am mostly a regular vegan. I made up my mind to try raw vegan again and see if I can stick to it full time. Fruits make me gain a massive amount of weight. So I'm surprised by that because fruit for me, I do not have, that doesn't happen to me. I don't have, my body doesn't gain weight when I eat a lot of fruits typically. So I'm sort of here, you're dealing with that. Um, I'd have to hear like what else you're eating too because I think you said you're not completely raw. So I think it's different if you're not completely raw and eating a lot of fruits, like the effect it has on you versus if you're like fully raw. I don't think the fruits will have like such a weight gaining effect. This commenter says, how much do you weigh and how can I gain some weight on the raw diet? Cause I want to go raw, but I'm scared to lose weight because I'm already skinny. I am 5'7 and I weigh 125 pounds. Typically my weight fluctuates like a little bit, but I'm what, between usually 125 and 130. And I actually weigh more now than I did before I was raw vegan. So usually I was between 115 and 120 when I wasn't raw vegan. So I have had no problem keeping on the weight. And again, I know this is a thing that a lot of people struggle with. How do they keep the weight on, on a raw vegan diet? And this makes a lot of people leave the raw vegan diet, especially if they get into working out or things like that. They're like, I just can't hold the weight. So I definitely don't have that problem. Um, I noticed for me when I first started going raw and I was eating super simple, just food in its natural states, I will state, I wasn't even making like dressings or things like that. I would use avocado as the dressing when I first went raw. It was just like totally, completely natural, like no recipes. And I weighed like 10 pounds less. So for me, like getting in, maybe something for people who struggle to gain weight is getting into the more creamy salad dressings and dips and things like that if you really want to do this diet. And I think that might help you like gain a bit more weight. So there's other things. I mean, maybe you're still detoxing, things like that. I know on the grape cleanse, Johanna Brandt, when she did the grape healing protocol where she healed people of cancer, I know that they would lose weight up until they started to get healthy and then they would like, their body would start gaining weight. So that's when she knew like it was time to stop like the detox program and the cleanse. So I think for some people, maybe they need more cleansing. Again, like when we've eaten a certain way for a number of decades, like we, it's not just an overnight thing. For most people, like you have to go through like detox, get all the toxins that have been built up inside you for decades and really clean yourself out, clean house, clean your cells. It takes like years and years, right? So also that being said, I can see how frustrating it would be for people like trying to eat super well and stick to the raw vegan diet and not get the results they want or like dealing with like feeling like they weigh too little. This commenter, so I don't have everyone's names written down, but this commenter said going raw means no alcohol or maybe some wine. So a lot of alcohols are actually vegan or raw vegan. I personally don't consume alcohol because I feel so much better without it. I used to drink every day. I did for 10 years and it did nothing positive for me. So yeah, I think back if I didn't drink for those 10 years, where I would be and like if I could like from 25 to 35, maybe even younger, I drank every day a bottle of wine and for me, it's not worth it. But for some people, if they feel like they wanna have a glass now and then, things like that, there are organic like raw wines you can find. And I'm pretty sure beer is vegan and there's other like vegan alcohols for sure. So if that's something you feel like you can't give up and you have to incorporate, then absolutely. But this other commenter said, ma'am, a large worm came from my colon. What diet can I eat? Please reply. So I'm going to do more videos about parasite, parasite cleansing and my favorite parasite cleanse. I've done a uh, deep parasite cleanse in the past that was very effective. So uh, subscribe so you don't miss that. But I also did a video on the best foods to kill parasites in the body. It's a great video. I will link it down below as well. But there's foods that are super um, effective at removing parasites from your body, even like other than doing parasite pill protocols, things like that. There's foods you can incorporate into your diet, which parasites absolutely hate and will keep them at bay. So raw onion, raw garlic, uh, pineapple is one. There's many different foods. So I'll link that video. And it's just, it's good to have more knowledge on that. It's super common. A lot of people have parasites and they don't realize and it can affect like your hunger. You, like I saw a video where I forget which channel it was on. I think it was on Eli's channel. He's been on my channel before, the Free Melon Society, where, no, 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 sorry. I think it was on Darian Ryder's channel. 
one of their channels, they had like this woman was complaining of bloating and hunger, like constant hunger. And then like, sorry guys, it's gross, but like they took out so many worms from her colon. It's crazy. And many people don't even realize I'm not trying to be gross or scare anyone, but it's definitely worth incorporating those foods and looking into maybe doing an annual parasite cleanse or something like that. And also I just want to say enemas like are super effective at diagnosing whether or not you have parasites in you as well. So many times if you do an enema, that's how you'll discover, oh, hold up, wait, what is going on? Anyway, um, Chris asks, who would you recommend not do raw vegan? Um, do you recommend transitioning or going cold turkey? I went cold turkey. I didn't transition slowly, but um, that's what worked for me. And I felt incredible by the end of the first day and everyone is different. So I think you have to think like what works for you. I know like doing that works great for people, but then again, some people feel like the detox symptoms are like too fast and too much to handle if they do that. Maybe you want to transition and do like raw till 4 PM or just start incorporating more until you want to go fully raw or maybe like add in a juice cleanse to start. A lot of people do like a 40 day juice cleanse and then they go raw from there. And I know a lot of people swear by that. Also to answer you, Chris, Chris, on who you would recommend not do raw vegan, one thing I wanna say is, I think in most cases for most adults, especially if you're ensuring that you're getting like all the supplements that might be missing, um, I think it works if you're doing it right. Uh, but I think who would not do raw vegan would be, I think with kids, we just have to be really careful. And I've done a video about that. Um, I know in a lot of cases, like they just can't eat the amount necessary to like totally thrive and they just need so many different things and our soils and our earth is so different than it was like 100 years ago 200 years ago 300 years ago so the raw vegan diet and their bodies is just different with how they grow so check out that video which i will link down below but that's one thing where i say you have to we really have to be careful with the kids and them eating a raw vegan diet this is a good question too Miriam says when referring to a cleanse jillian please tell me how you get rid of cravings cravings for carbs salty foods burgers grains specifically wheat this is my biggest hurdle i always give up on day three because of the bloody cravings so i just want to say i get it cravings are so hard to deal with especially on a cleanse that's when they can be the most intense and that's when it can make us realize how much we use food as like an emotional crutch or something like that. That's what I learned too when I do these mono fruit cleanses or like grape or watermelon cleanses as well. So I think my biggest tips on how to handle those cravings would be to like have a goal, set it in your mind and just decide you're going to stick to it and realize like after the cleanse, the foods aren't going anywhere. They'll always be there. But um, also a big thing is many times we think we're hungry and we're not. Many times we are actually dehydrated. So have a glass of water when you have a craving um, on a cleanse, eat more or drink more of whatever you're having on that cleanse. If, you, if you're like having cravings, then go have more juice if it's a juice cleanse or go have more fruit if it's a mono fruit cleanse and also keep busy. So don't just sit around thinking about cravings if you're on a cleanse. Keep yourself busy. In most cases on these cleanses, you have more energy if you're doing the cleanse properly than you do when you're not on the cleanse. You have all this energy, use it, go for a walk. Emotion follows motion. Get busy, focus on your passions. That will distract you and sort of put you in a flow state in your element and have you forget about those cravings as well. So Shalu writes, I lost my cheeks. It became slender after adopting to a raw vegan diet. Any tips? So I do have a tip on this. Um, I, get, I think that does happen to some people, but for me, I like to include some Celtic sea salt in my diet. There's other raw vegans that say the same thing. When you include like a little bit of fats and a little bit of salts in your diet, in most cases your face does not experience like that super extra slender look. Fit G says, hi Jillian, haven't left you a comment since earlier this year when I started the raw vegan journey. I must say that although I've stuck with it for eight months and counting, way to go Fit G, that's amazing. I'm still going through detox phase. She says, I think it's a she, sorry if you're a he, but I think Fiji is a she. But anyway, it's horrible. I've never looked this bad in all my life and lost so much weight. I was at a good size before this and now I am so skinny. I get comments from everyone I know asking me if I'm okay because I look sickly. That's so bad, I feel so bad for you. I know that everyone goes through the detox stage differently, but mine is not going very well. I had been vegan for several, several years prior to this and it's really baffling. I eat a variety of fats and lots of fruits and veggies and make my own pressed juices. It's kind of discouraging how I feel and look. And if something doesn't change soon, I have to resort partly back to cooked food. Well, I don't blame you. And I'm so sorry that you're having that experience, especially when we're making such an effort to like 
take su such good care of our body and then that's the result we're experiencing. I know some other people who have experienced that as well and it's obviously discouraging and I'm sorry. Um, I do want to say, like, I don't know if you've done this, but maybe I recommend going to the doctor and getting your blood work drawn, see if there's any nutrients off or nutrients missing um, in your body from either before being uh, raw or even now from being raw and see if there's anything because lacking in certain nutrients could throw everything off. And again, it could just be detox. I mean, I obviously don't know for sure, but it could be detox. You have to listen to your body, listen to your gut too, and like follow what's right for you. If you feel like you have to go back, then go back. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry you're dealing with that. So I want to end off with a couple, two super inspiring comments that I've read recently. This commenter said, hi Jillian, after I watched your watermelon cleanse video, three days later I did the same cleanse for 25 days and it healed my acne. Lost a ton of weight and my energy skyrocketed. So that's amazing. I love doing the mono fruit cleanses. They really make me feel amazing and your energy is so high. And I love seeing stories about how it healed her acne. That's what this diet does. I used to have bad skin in various areas of my body and my skin has never been better than on the raw vegan diet. And that is the case for so many raw vegans, not just me. And I mean, I just could go on and on about how the benefits and how amazing they are specifically for your skin. So how you nurture and feed yourself in your body, like it comes out through your skin and shows and it's a reflection of what is going on on the inside. Lady Lily writes, thank you so much for this. Going raw every three months and then off every three months every year cured me of my multiple sclerosis. I have had it since six years old, constantly sick and going numb from my shoulders down. I want to go raw vegan full time and never look back. This video has really helped me make up my mind. Thank you so much. P.S. I'm finally going to be able to drive a car at age 31. I could cry. So I think that's so incredible. The raw living foods have so much power to them, so much healing power. And it just like, in a case like that, I think it's absolutely amazing, especially in cases where people say like things are incurable. There's so many things people have done. I did a video recently with Sarah Erica. She did a 365 day juice cleanse after being told she'd have to sit in a wheelchair and basically wait around to die. She took things in her own hands and I'm not saying like everyone go do that, but you have to do what's right for you and what you believe will work for you. But she did a 365 day juice cleanse on day 366. The wheelchair was gone and she ran a marathon. I literally got goosebumps and almost cried when I saw the video. It's so incredible. So I really truly believe like anything can be healed. These foods have so much power. This is the best thing I have ever done with my life to transition to this diet. And yeah, that's it for today's video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope um, if you did, give it a big thumbs up right now. And if you guys have any other comments or questions about this lifestyle, definitely comment them down below. I might answer them in my next video and definitely interact with you in the comment section as well. So I will see you guys next week. Bye.